Hey you guys, this is Raphael from ShilohRelics.com. I hope you're having a good day. It's a beautiful day in Tennessee and I'm just thankful to be here. And I know you guys feel the same way. Today we're gonna to talk about a neat piece from the state of North Carolina. North Carolina, the Tar Heel State, supplied many Confederates during the war and they also supplied many weapons. One of those weapons was this design of sword. It's a short artillery sword, and they're patterned after the gladiator sword. They're fierce looking weapons, but they realized they were fierce looking weapons, but in modern warfare of the Civil War, they ended up being more of a tool than they were a weapon. This particular style is very distinctive. It was made in North Carolina by a fellow's company that's known as the Kenansville Firm, also known as the Confederate States Armory. And it was owned by a guy named Louis Froelich. And Froelich was born in 1817 in Germany. His family moved here when, uh, when he was small. They were one of the many people that migrated from Germany to America. They were living in New York. And in September of 1861, he realized that there was a lot of opportunity in North Carolina for production and for manufacture and for making money. And so he loaded up his family and he headed to North Carolina. They moved to the port city of Wilmington, Wilmington on the Cape Fear River, and he started the Wilmington Sword Factory. And they worked there until, uh, the factory burned down and he moved to uh, Duplin County, a place called Kenansville, a little community. And he set up one of the most uh, high functioning companies down there. They made a lot of swords, they made buttons, they made a lot of things for the Confederate government and for the state of North Carolina as well. This is one of my favorite pieces that they make because I love artillery and I love the look of a short sword. The Confederacy copied these swords from the U.S. Model 1832. And they're very distinctive because of the way the handle is produced. It's a small handle. A lot of the Confederate artillery swords have a large handle, but this one's really small. When you put your hand on it, it almost goes away and it has the thin, slender cross guard, and it has a 19 inch blade. And if you notice, there's one groove that runs down the center of the blade. And you'll hear that referred to as a blood fuller. And for years, I thought that that was designed for making the sword easier to come out of someone. It was actually started dec uh, centuries ago in Japan from the best I could research that it was a way to not only reduce the weight of the sword, but it was also to make the blade more durable and had nothing to do with blood. It could work. I guess that's something for the, the guys on the science show to figure out, but that was what it was originally designed for. And this one has the full length 19 inch blade but what's special about this one and what makes it extra valuable is that it has the original scabbard. And a lot of times Confederate scabbards, when they're made out of leather and brass, the leather, they were in such a hurry to get the materials to make these swords that they bought un completely uh, untreated uh, and poor quality leathers because necessity overran their strict quality control. And so a lot of times that leather, when it dried up and cured, it would break. And so most of the time, these swords are missing the scabbard. The scabbards on these are real distinctive as well. They've got the leather body and they've got brass up at the top and on the bottom. And if you notice on the very bottom, there's a little button and you can imagine it wouldn't take a lot to pop that off of there. And also at the top, there's another button. And this one actually clipped into what they call a frog on the belt. And it was a piece of leather that hung down from the belt. 
it slid into it and that's what made sure that it didn't come off. And they're easily lost. And this one has everything you could hope for on one of these. They are seldom found with the scabbard. The scabbard's worth as much as a sword to a collector because you want, if you're gonna get the best, you want that scabbard with it. This one uh, is one that is recorded as being ordered by the Confederate government. Some of the actual paperwork from Froelich's company survives. And in March to September of 1862, they did 318 of these for the government. And that's just one little period. They made quite a few more, but they don't survive because they weren't a functional weapon. Most of them that survived were taken home and not pressed into service. This one has a cool look. It's completely untouched from tip to tip. And today you can see it on shallowrelics.com for $3,950. That price is actually less than what it would have been a couple of years ago. Uh, Confederate swords have adjusted over the last few years, and this sword at one time would have probably brought $5,5500. So in my opinion, it's a great time to collect. Every collecting field has highs and lows, and in my opinion, this one is on one of the downturns and Barring something unforeseen, should go up. Never buy anything because you expect it to go up because none of us do have that crystal ball. But if I hit the lottery tonight, I will buy this one and 10 more just like it. I hope that you enjoy these videos. I enjoy getting to share some of the information that I've learned over the years. I'm thankful for all of those guys that took the time to share their knowledge with me. And I feel very honored that I get to do it for some of you guys. I hope that y'all have a wonderful day. When you're out and about, please take a second and just say hello to somebody. A friend is just someone that you haven't met yet. I hope that y'all have a wonderful evening. Remember, I love you guys and I'll catch you next time. Have a great day.